Hello everyone. Hope you're having a good day today. Uh, back in my sister's cabin today and uh, having again a little R&R. &R. But I uh, want to share with you again from the Essential Jesus uh, Bible Study from uh, the YouVersion Bible app or Bible.com. And we're to day 48. Uh, I know if you're following along in, in the devotional, you can go to that number. But uh, uh, otherwise, we're, we're just uh, moving ahead with the next one. And so let's, uh, let's jump into it. I think, I think this is a little bit of a continuation of, of talking about what we did yesterday with being rich towards God, of having a, a heart that uh, holds loosely to things of this world and, and holds firmly to Jesus, uh, lets him lead us. And, and you know, especially it comes to giving and those kinds of things. We, you know, we're, we, we may earn all we can and save all we can, but then we give all we can, as Wesley said. Uh, we just do everything we can to help others, uh, to build the kingdom, uh, to do everything we can. And I think it, it gets to a, a heart that is in the right place, uh, a mindset that's, that's just different than, than our world has, has to offer. So let's uh, dig in, first of all, with the prayer. We're going to be in Luke chapter 14. Uh, verses 1 to 24. And here's the prayer. Praise God for his goodness to you each day and then spend a few moments in quiet worship. Uh, just spend a few moments. You can just put hit pause on this video and just thanking God for who he is and what he's done for you and just worshiping him and for his goodness, for his blessings, for his holiness, uh, for his greatness. Uh, you know, again, for his goodness. Just, just all these different ways that, that God is so good. Uh, we need to worship him and thank him and praise him uh, for all that he does does for us. Well, let's dig into uh, to, to this passage, Luke 14, 1 to 24. It says, One Sabbath when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched, uh, something the Pharisees often did. Um, all those in, in leadership, they didn't know what to make of Jesus and uh, what they could get understand about him. They realized that he kind of... Uh, went in the face of, of much of what they believed and much of what they did. And, and it, uh, so they were always trying to trap him, get him to say something that uh, would, would be considered uh, you know, against them and so that they could then bring charges against him or we know eventually they, they wanted to put him to death. But uh, it's all part of that process. Uh, it's kind of a cat and mouse kind of game that they have going on. And so... Uh, you know, Jesus is eating with a, at a prom, the house of a prominent Pharisee, and he's being carefully watched. And, and we'll see again in this one today, he'll, he'll sort of turn the tables on them. And he sort of, even before they have a chance to try to trap him, the one we're going to see today, he, he kind of traps them. And so it says, there in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. There's a guy that's sick. There's a guy that's in need. Again, it's the Sabbath. And, and that's important because they weren't really supposed to heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus, he puts that out in front of them. At least the Pharisees didn't think you were supposed to. In verse 3, it says, Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? Again, he's kind of turning the tables on them. Uh, he's trying to trap them and get them to say something they might not want to say. Because, uh, again, they wouldn't know how to answer that. Is it, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? They're kind of in a catch-22. If they say, yes, it's lawful, well, then that kind of goes against some of the other things about what you can do and can't do on the Sabbath. If they say it's, it's, you know, it's, it's lawful to heal, if you can heal, then, then you know, that's kind of, uh, anyway, it, it just flies in the face. They're, they're in a no-win situation here. Verse 4, but they remain silent. That's all they could do. So taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on his way. Then he asked them, if one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? Uh, in other words, you know, <laughs> their laws go out the window if, if something they own or something very personal to them like a child is, is hurting or struggling. Won't you do something to immediately pull them out? Uh, you know, it'd be crazy to not do that, right? Um, and again, they're left silent as they had nothing to say. They, are, uh, they don't know what to do with Jesus. They're, they're struggling to figure him out. Verse 7, when he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. 
If so, the host will, who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place so that when you are, your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all, your, all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. It's a good lesson on humility. Uh, the way of Jesus is, is to be humble, to choose you know, what is less. And then if there's, like you're saying here, if, if you, you know, don't assume. <laughs> and, and I think that has a lot to do with where our heart is. If you just automatically take the, the back place, the, the least place, the place of least honor, uh, you know, it, it'll be okay. You, you don't need that in a lot of ways. You know, humility tells us that we, you know, we, we just are, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we consider others more than ourselves. That's the Jesus way of, of living. Verse 12, then Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends. Uh, your brothers, your sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you'll be repaid. Again, where is your heart? Are you rich towards God, or are you rich towards yourself? Uh, you're, if you're rich towards yourself, you'll invite those who will pay you back. And, and that's, that's uh, not necessarily the best way. Again, in the economy of Jesus, being rich, rich towards God means you you know, you think of others, you think of those in need. It's more important to help those in need than to help those that are not. Uh, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Um, God is taking account. You know, where our humility steps in, are we being humble? Are we being who, who God wants us to be? Or are we thinking of ourselves? It's an important thing for us to, to encounter because, like I said, the way of Jesus is, is to think of others, to think of the kingdom, to, to be rich towards, towards God. Uh, he goes on, when, when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the, of, in the kingdom of God. Now, he's sort of responding to what Jesus has just said. Uh, Although they cannot repay, you'll be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And so he's just kind of saying, yes, Jesus, you're right. And he, he's saying, you know, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God, which, is, which would be something that anyone would say. A Pharisee would say, yes, Jesus, you're right. Uh, it's blessed to be, the, be able to go to the feast uh, in the kingdom of God and, and it's something we can all look, look forward to. And it's a general statement, but Jesus jumps off of that and he, he sort of shows how the guy is right. In verse 16, Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come for everything is now ready. Uh, but they all alike began to make excuses. Uh, again, we're thinking about being rich towards God. Uh, if you're rich towards God, you'll do what God wants you to do. You'll, you'll go to the banquet. That the, you know, that's the example in this, in this parable is Jesus is the one inviting people to come to him and saying the, the banquet's now ready. And so so, uh, you know, they all, but they all like make, begin to make excuses. That's not being rich towards God. That's being rich towards ourselves. That is what they have to do is more important than what God has for them. And sometimes we get in that place, don't we? We think what we have to do is more important than what God has. So verse 18, but they all like begin to make excuses. The first said, I've just bought a field, must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another, I, got, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Uh, in other words, if they won't come, I'll... And, and this is an you know, analogy with Jesus and the Pharisees. And again, he's speaking to Pharisees here. You know, they're the ones that should have been invited or should have come first to him. They're the ones that should have responded to the gospel, uh, but they failed to do that. And they're just trying to trap Jesus. They're watching him carefully. And, and so Jesus says, well, hey, if you're not going to come, I'll invite the, the ones that you wouldn't invite, uh, the, the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame, who Jesus came to save just as much as the Pharisees. Uh, all are invited to, to, to him and to his table. And uh, it, it's, it's 
you know, it's kind of a good example here. I think it's kind of cool the way that Jesus works in this jab at the Pharisees, trying to help them see their wayward ways. You know, they're, they're so consumed with themselves, and, and they need to be more focused on what God wants and be rich towards God. Uh, come, verse 22, Sir, the servant said, What, what you ordered has, has been done, but there's still, no, there's still room. Verse 23, then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. In other words, one of those that were invited and, and couldn't come for whatever reason, had whatever excuse. Uh, we, we need to not have, have excuses when God asks us or God invites us to come. We come. Uh, we come to him and, and we worship him. We talked about that at the beginning. We want to worship the Lord because of who he is and what he's done for us. Well, let's go to the reflection questions. What keeps people you know from wanting to be part of the kingdom of God? What excuses do they often give? And you can think in your own life, people that you've come across, what are their excuses? And, and sometimes I've, I've heard of people, you know, well, I don't want to have to give up partying. I don't want to give up uh, living for the, the pleasures of this world. And they don't say it that way often, but, but that's the reality. Something else is more important than God. And the reality is when we've been invited, we need to come. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what we have. We, we like the, you know, Peter and then they just, just left everything they had along the, the seashore and, and uh, you know, uh, follow Jesus. Uh, they didn't, no second guessing, no, no uh, well, I got to do this. No, it's, they just left everything and went. And that's the way we need to be too. Uh, not have excuses, but to just give. Uh, just to, to follow, just to be who the Lord wants us to be, being rich towards God, not rich towards ourselves or this world. Uh, how do you think that makes God feel? Uh, I was thinking about that, how, how it makes God feel. I, I think about if I, let's say I were to, to get someone a really nice gift and I were to give it to them and, uh, you know, they were just to look at, oh, that's nice, thank you, but I've got something else to do. Uh, I'm not going to open it. I'm just going to leave it here. You'd feel pretty rotten, right? I mean, you'd feel like you were being taken for granted. You would feel like you, well, you might want to give that gift to someone else. That's that's kind of the point of, of the parable here is that, that uh, Jesus says, hey, okay, they don't want it. We'll give it to, to the poor, to the weak, to the lame, to, you know, uh, all of those. We'll give it to somebody else. And, and so... Uh, you know, I'm sure there's, like I said, there's a little bit of hurt there. There's a little bit of, okay, we'll do something else. We'll give it to someone else. I, I, I think that's a, a good realization we need to come to. We need to recognize if we're not going to live by faith, uh, if we're not going to live the way God wants us to live, then, then he'll do something else. He'll find someone that does, uh, that will, that will follow, uh, that will be his people. In the application, as soon as you can, invite someone you wouldn't normally socialize with to come to your home and be your guest for dinner. Welcome them in Jesus' name. In this name of day of COVID, maybe you can do something else. Have something delivered to someone's house or, um, you know, go meet somewhere out or that kind of thing or whatever. Uh, in some way, socialize with someone that's not like you and uh, welcome them in Jesus' name. And it's, it's all about Jesus. It's all about re being rich towards, towards God. Again, someone that might normally not be invited. Final prayer. Lord, may I always be ready to hear and answer your invitation to me. And may I offer your same welcome to others also. Uh, let's continue in prayer. Lord, help us, uh, first of all, to be responsive to you. If you invite us to do something, if you invite us to to follow you in some way, Lord, help us to respond quickly and not, not be hesitant, not think, oh, well, I've got to do this and that and the other thing, and I'll do this first or that first and those kinds of things. Lord, help us to, uh, to just be responsive, to, be, to follow you as best we can, to follow your, your will. And not only that, Lord, but help us to be quick to invite others, even those that might be different than us, that might be uh, well, the crippled, the lame, the whatever, the sick. Lord, help us to uh, just follow you as we should. Thank you, Lord. Lord, continue to help us with the coronavirus. We lift up doctors and nurses and first responders, all of those in the medical community. We thank you for the work they're doing in caring for those with the virus and uh, 
getting the vaccines out there. We just ask your blessings on them. Uh, be near to them in these days. Lord, thank you for what you've done and what you're doing and what you're going to do. Uh, you are faithful. Uh, we do lift up those that are sick, uh, those that are in need of a touch from you. Lord, we just pray your blessings on them uh, each and every day. Uh, just be with us all. Thank you for each one that's watching. And again, continue to draw us closer to you to see more of who you are and to love you more. Uh, just help us, Lord, every day as we do that. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching again today. And we'll be back tomorrow with uh, another devotional. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll see you later. You have a, have a very blessed day. And we'll see you. Bye-bye.